Well, it's become something of a laughing stock to transparency advocates. The Stop Trading on Congressional uh, Knowledge Act, better known as the Stop Act, Stock Act, that is, was supposed to clear the way for a more open government when it comes to Wall Street and the potential for insider trading. It was enacted a little bit over a year ago, but the new legislation that uh, was just passed and signed by President Obama early this weekend essentially took the bite out of this law. Here's how. Now, the Stock Act was supposed to force the executive branch, the legislative branch, as well as military leaders and congressional staff members to publish searchable financial disclosures online. But critics called the act an invasion of privacy and a threat to national security interests. As a result, the act was delayed over and over and over again until today. The new rule is that the data has to be public, but not necessarily on the internet and not necessarily in a searchable database. In other words, security through obscurity. To talk more about this and everything about the economy, I'm joined now by Les Leopold. He's the author of How to Make a Million Dollars an Hour. Hi there, Les. So let's start by talking about this stock act that went into effect today. Uh, what is the point of this actual law if we have taken the bite out of it? Well, the point is public relations. The point is to try to make it seem as if they're disclosing without disclosing. Okay. So what does it do anymore? Does it do anything other than bolster the reputation? And it's hard to argue that it does that even, isn't it? Well, if they don't disclose it, we can't get our hands on it. But you know what's really behind this is, is, is a much more serious problem. Uh, people are supposed to go into public life in order to serve. Not, they don't, they're not supposed to go into public life in order to make a ton of money. So when you think about it, there's no reason for them to have these complex financial portfolios. There'd be nothing to hide to begin with. So I, I think this is a, a you know, they want to have, they, they want to make money. You know? well, what's the point, Les, of having it, of having this obscurity uh, through secure or security through obscurity? Excuse me. I mean, it's still available. So if it really is a threat to national security interests, then why not close the documents altogether? Look, they're, they're coming up with excuses to delay the implementation as long as they can. And they'll come up with another excuse a year from now when they're supposed to implement it, and on one, the year after that, because they don't want to disclose. It's embarrassing, just like it was embarrassing to uh, Governor Romney in the last election. But at the same time, we have congressional members that are signing on to this bill, uh, this act, saying that they don't want this information to be public. But it is directly against the congressional members, their staffers, and arguably the executive branch and the executive branch staffers. So how can we expect them to rule fairly and um, with no bias on this law when they're the ones whose interests are being hurt? I don't think we can expect them to rule fairly. I mean, that's one of the problems with the credi credibility in general. We have this incredible interlocking network between Washington and Wall Street and other large corporations as well. And that has to be broken up. The disclosure laws would help, but they don't go nearly far enough. They should not be able to amass these uh, fortunes while they're holding public office. Okay, so let's talk about your new book. Now, in your new book, it is the Millionaire's Dollars and uh, Million Dollars an Hour book. Um, you talk about the hedge fund gifters and the ways that they not only make business, but that the business lies in breaking the rules and lying. Um, can you explain how, how you got to this conclusion in this book? Well, I wanted to figure out, I, I came across a statistic that kind of blew my mind when I found out that the top hedge fund earner made as much in one hour as the average family made in 47 years. One hour equals 47 years. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's very <laughs> impressive. So I wanted to figure out, well, one, how did they do it? Two, did they really produce any economic value for the uh, society and economy for all, for all that money? Uh, and when I explored those two questions, what I found out was uh, a lot of what they do is barely legal. Some of it is uh, outright illegal. And uh, certainly the rest of us would think that much of what they do is, is just unethical, cheating. And I, I started, to, uh, uh, the, I just stumbled into one method after the other, from insider trading to this high frequency trading to the uh, 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 manipulation of media, you know, feeding you a false rumor so I can make money on the side uh, for my hedge fund. And I think we've given them a free ride. The reason I wrote this book was to, 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 to demystify it uh, so that the rest of us could figure out how do these, these are the richest of the rich. They make a hundred times, a thousand times more than CEOs, uh, normal CEOs make. 
What are they doing? How do they do it? How does it benefit uh, the economy? And the answer is, it's dangerous. <clears throat> one of uh, uh, the most amazing one I, I, I stumbled into was this. They actually design products so that they will fail. Securities are designed to fail so they can collect the insurance on it. And no place else in capitalism is that allowed. Absolutely. But let me ask you, the, what makes hedge funds unique? I mean, obviously, the financial crisis of 2008 showed that big banks like Bank of America, Citi, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Goldman Sachs, et cetera, were lying both to regulators as well to their, as to their customers. So what makes lying of hedge fund managers really that unique, or is it? Well, you're making a good point. Uh, Hedge funds exist also inside of the large financial institutions. They call them proprietary trading desks, but they're basically the same thing. What makes them uh, together, what makes them incredibly unique, is they are unbelievably dangerous to the rest of the economy. They, uh, they, uh, it's the ones that are outside the banks are, have very few regulations on them. So, and what they do is, is basically uh, proprietary. So we don't know what it is they're doing. We don't know what markets they're jumping in and out of. We don't know how uh, the details of how they could be destabilizing uh, the economy. We don't know until after it happens. And uh, uh, I think something's got to be done about it. Now, one of the people that you actually brought up is CNBC host Jim Cramer. He was a hedge fund manager for quite a, a long amount of time. Um, and he talked at length, uh, and to the surprise of a lot of people, about just what he did when he was uh, managing these funds. But to date, he's one of the only people that is talking about this. So one, how can we find the other evidence? And two, how can we learn to regulate against it or prevent this if no one else is talking about it and there's very little evidence? Well, uh, first of all, he didn't start talking until 10 years after he ran his hedge fund. And he was the one that was, uh, he basically says, uh, you shouldn't be in the business unless you're willing to cheat. And he just says that. Uh, how we, uh, we, we are starting to catch some of them based on their insider trading. You know, they've, they've uh, wired them up. They've got people, they've, got, they've caught about 70 people so far uh, on, 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 on those things. Uh, it's very hard to catch them. But the way you catch them, it connects with our previous conversation. You catch them by shining a bright light on them. When you shine a bright light on them, then we start uh, to ask the basic questions about what, whether what they're doing is legal, and it's, some of it is definitely unethical and, and should be outlawed. Uh, that's what the book's about. And uh, it is on the bookshelves right now, How to Make a Million Dollars an Hour. Leslie Apold, author, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.